Hey, I'll tell you what, Tebs, yeah? Is this not been stuck in your head all day because it's been stuck in mine? You oh. think you know who you are? You <laughs> think you know who you... Oh, it's been in my head all day. Oh, God. When I watch wrestling late at night, it just you go to bed with songs rattling in your head and Jesus. Oh, I loved it. I can't believe you two didn't like it. Anyway, I'll... Uh... So, yeah, welcome to WWE versus AEW podcast. Don't know I'm going to be looking. Um, today, we're going to be talking about NXT TakeOver in your house. Um, not by choice, but by force. But, yeah, it was the first TakeOver since the pandemic because, obviously, the one on, well, on WrestleMania weekend got cancelled um, and they did it over TV. Um, we're just going to quickly start by talking, seeing this is the WWE AEW podcast, just quickly about the ratings. Um, the ratings for last week's TV were a lot closer. Um, I think it was 15,000 more viewers for AEW. I've not got the information in front of me, but I think it was 730,000 for AEW, 715 for NXT. Um, I know we spoke before we started recording Tebs. I'm joined by Tebs today. I've not even introduced him. What a terrible host I am. Um, so, so wait, I'm getting used to it now. I'm getting used to it. <laughs> oh, though. cheers, mate. Cheers. <laughs> um, you were um, you were saying off air you was like struggling to remember what had happened, which pretty much sums up the two shows for me. I thought there was... Yeah. Like, Dynamite was the main event with Cody and Jungle Boy. I don't know if you've seen that main event, haven't you? Uh, yeah, and I'm probably going to get pitchforks and stones for this but I just I can remember turning it off halfway through I just thought this has got a Cody win all over it fair enough I know what's going to happen see you later I, I, it didn't get me at all that's probably why I'm struggling to remember what happened because when the set it up is going to be a recurring title challenge then you just think you're not going to lose it in the first bloody week are you and I, I just couldn't get into it oh, as if I really liked it I, I like Jungle Boy I feel, I, I feel like we first watched him and he was like so green and each time he seems to be getting just a little bit better so I'm, I'm enjoying watching him. I watched the, um, what do they call it? You know, the the double or nothing battle royal from the first event they had last year, where they came out oh, yeah, with yeah. packs of four and then Hangman came oh, out at the end. It was awful, that. It was awful, but it, it's it's actually quite interesting seeing Jungle Boy in there now and MJF and seeing, you know, who's actually managed to stick around, which ones they've got rid of. Um, but yeah, Jungle Boys come on night and day. I'm not saying it was a bad match. I'm just saying on a Thursday, you've got four hours of wrestling to watch. And when you know one of the outcomes and the match ain't getting you, you're not going to hang around for it. So that was uh, that was me on Thursday. But um, the rest of it was uh, fairly good from what I remember. Um, Revival, uh, sorry, so, excuse me, F FTR, um, making themselves known in that good promo with, uh, was it Shivoni who was interviewing him? Yeah, when he went, all this time I thought FTR was stood for bleep the bleep. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I really enjoyed it. I think it moved things along without them having to get in the ring just yet. So there was good, obviously good spits to take from it. Um, I've been a bit down on NXT, really, so I'm focusing more on AEW at the minute. But um, what uh, what are you making of it at the minute? Oh, NXT just, I don't know. I feel like I've, I started trying to watch NXT first because I was enjoying AEW more. But... I, I th I could, I, when I get in on a Thursday, the last thing I want to do, it sounds terrible, is watch NXT. It's just, it's like two, two old, half, half of 205 Live. Yeah. It's just, like, I think we talked about it over text message, but, yeah. like, it's just fell off a cliff for me recently, NXT. When I first turned it on, I think it was either straight away or it was in the first hour. Um, it, You know, it was a typical match that descended into a mixed match, mix, excuse me, mixed tag team match. Uh, and it just screams of stuff that they do on Raw and SmackDown when they've got no idea for anything else. We don't want yeah. this match to go ahead now, so let's let's make it a tag match. And I'm seeing it with NXT of what I've seen with Raw and SmackDown. And, and I was worried about that when the first went to Wednesday Night Live, you know, went up to two hours. And I was worried that NXT would just become a pale imitation of what we're getting on Monday and Friday. And it's to me, it's looking like that way. Yeah, slowly it is getting that way. So definitely out of the two, the better show was AEW. So that would be your winner of the week. I'm trying to think, match of the week. I mean, the Drake Maverick match, I just sort of breezed through it. I couldn't... I, I, is it just me, right? I, I feel like when like an independent wrestler comes onto the scene or someone joins NXT, I, who is this Phantasma bloke? Have I missed something? Was he no, just there no, one week? 
Yeah, he just turned up one week. Was he in the... Um, he might have been in the first breakout tournament from last summer. I'm, I'm, I don't know. I've never heard of him before. Maybe he's a, another wrestler from Indies that's come up and he's been rebranded or whatever. I don't know. But um, no, I never heard of him. And they were doing the the bit with the um, the guys jumping out of the car and trying to kidnap wrestlers. Um, and I think Phantasma has been in, introduced in that sort of way because Drake Maverick fought them off at one point. Didn't he? They came they came down to the ring to try and kidnap a wrestler after through a triple threat, and uh, it, Maverick were fighting them off. I'd be interested to see where that goes. His 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 quality is Phantasma, and I. I I, I just had a, a face on with the whole Drake Maverick thing. And a lot of people say I'm being a miserable bastard about it, but I, I didn't appreciate how that story went out. Um, oh, it went great. I didn't, a lot over it. it. It was obvious from the first week he was going to get the contract. And he sh- that video meant a lot to a lot of people. There was a man laying his soul bare on Twitter saying... I'm out of a job. I've lost doing the thing I love. And at that time, a lot of people were going through that same thing. Now, they've either seen it as an opportunity and brought him back. Well, okay, I'm sure there's other wrestlers that could do that with as well. Or they did it to set up a storyline. And it, it took the attention away from a lot of other wrestlers that have not got offered contracts. So if it was a whole, if it was all the work, it, it was in bad taste, in my opinion. Yeah, not great, not great. So the, the two shows I thought were, were just a bit weak this week, if I'm honest. They weren't, I don't know, it's getting a bit of a graft, like watching these every Thursday, um, especially when you've watched, like, I'm enjoying watching Raw, Reese. I don't know if it, I'm just cracking up, but I do fast forward for a lot of it. But I'd yeah. say out of everything, I'm sort of enjoying little bits. Of, I, I don't know, maybe I am just cracking up. Everyone's going crazy with this lockdown. So... Let's get into what we watched last night, NXT in your house. For people who don't know, we do a, like, I don't know, like a little prediction thing, don't we? Me, you, and Neil nearly was yep. going to be on the show, but he's not. Who won? Did you win? I think yeah, you did, yeah, didn't I you? Did. Five, five out of six. Yeah. Oh, is it? Char- is it? Charlotte let me down, and if I'd have thought about it properly, but, uh, you know, Charlotte let me down in the last one for me, for me full sweep. Yeah, so I, we'll get into the matches in a second, but I was thinking of a spoiler alert, and not all everyone knows what happens now. Io Shirai, in probably the main headline on the show, um, pinned Rhea Ripley to win the NXT Women's title. And halfway through the match, I was sat thinking, do you know what? I said in this predictions thing that um, Rhea Ripley was going to win. But thinking about it, it'd make more sense. Charlotte back on the main roster, but also they need a big baby face to replace Becky Lynch on Raw. So yeah. really, you'd be getting Rhea Ripley's the standout to get her on Raw as like one of the top baby faces. So I thought maybe the Lavio win, and then Charlotte and Rhea can finish their um, feud on the main roster, maybe at SummerSlam or something. So I don't know what if your the, thoughts on the, that. Were. If, the, if they're going to put Oscar up against Flair in a program, then Oscar's got to turn face because nobody's going to cheer Flair. She just gets booed for who she is, what she is, and the opportunities she's been given. Um, and they announced pretty much straight after it that Flair's got a match against Oscar on Monday night on, on Raw. So um, Charlotte going back to Raw is, I think, the best thing for Raw, especially considering they've lost Lynch. Um, but they need more talent there. And I think I'd love to see Ripley on the main roster anytime soon. I really would. There's there's an abundance of women's talent on NXT that they don't have to rely on keeping hold of a Shane or a, an Oscar on for so long because there's nobody else behind it to come up. There's plenty of other women on that NXT roster. So, yeah, realistically, having Ripley move up, even to SmackDown, um, and give other people that opportunity now, everyone can see how good Ripley is. Um, I just wanted to have the opportunity to show it. Yeah, I mean, you can, like say, we're putting the belt on EO. She's like, for me, she's probably the best women's wrestler in the world. She's gonna have good matches with all these. Do you know what I mean? All like say the Shotzi Blackhearts and all the I don't know. She had a great match with Candice LeRae at a takeover about a year yeah. ago. But yeah, I Did think they, have, it, they had it was a cage a match as well. They had a great cage match as well, I think. Right, right. That must Candice have been she doing the moonsault off Eos. Eos sure was brilliant. I, I hadn't seen much of her. I hadn't seen anything of her to tell, tell the truth before she came to NXT. Um absolutely fantastic. Brilliant talent, incredibly athletic. Um it, Let's hope she gets that opportunity. I, I hope she gets a good run at it now. I really do. Keep lining yeah. people up for her. I really do. I, yeah, I, I, definitely. Looking, looking back, I think I'd have liked to... I know we're jumping straight to the main event here, but I'd have liked to, to have got the pin on Flair 
And then at least it gives Ripley that opportunity to say to her, you didn't pin me. Instead now, where does Ripley go? She can say to Shirai, I want my rematch. Why? I've just pinned you. So I, I wouldn't have minded seeing Charlotte take the pin and protect Ripley that way. But apart from that, that triple threat was a cracking match. Absolutely. Yeah, we might as well talk about that now. So I know, I know what you mean. I was watching, I was really enjoying the match thinking, yeah. Do you know what I mean? The main event's been brilliant, so it'll make up for the rest of the show. But I thought the crowd did a really, well, the, the the fake fans did a really good job, to be honest. I'm thinking, is EO actually getting herself really over it or what? Because they were going crazy for it, parts of that match. Yeah. And the, it was great when she had her in the figure eight. And then I just didn't like the finish of it. Like you said, I thought, to me, Charlotte is on NXT, yeah? Charlotte even said this in an, in an interview. She is on NXT to help get the other girls over. It was Triple H, actually, who said it, um, right. building up to the show. So if Charlotte's on NXT, yeah, to get the other girls over, right, why, why is she, she beat Rhea Ripley at WrestleMania, yeah, and she didn't take the pin in this triple threat match? So if they don't do Charlotte versus EO at the next takeover, then for me, there's absolutely no reason why Charlotte shouldn't have took that pin because the yeah. pin will mean a lot more on Charlotte than it would. And I hate pins where, you know, someone's got someone in a move and then they hit the move and get the pin because you're sort of like distracted with what's going on. You know, like it happened with uh, Kushida against Drake Maverick on NXT yes. the other week. And I was like, you wanted to like pop for it. But at the same time, you think it did. Do you know what I mean? There's a lot of things for your brain to comprehend, so I didn't really yeah, like that like, the way they did it. I do like it. It's, now you've just mentioned, you've just reminded me of the Kushida one from last, I think it was last week. Yeah. And I, it's a clever way to finish. I do like it. And last night I got the idea that she does the moonsault onto Ripley and um, flares, because she's in the figure eight, figure four leg lock, she can't get her legs out unentangled to break the fin pinfall fast enough but on the other hand how many times have we seen somebody in a figure four leg lock who puts the lays down to take the pressure off and the ref starts counting a three so it's one of them that it's very convenient and to me when when it's a convenient finish like that that you know will bend the rules slightly because it looks good then you've got to think who's benefiting from it and it's charlotte and let's not beat around the bush. She is getting opportunity and she is protected. And yeah, and I think what Triple H says on media calls and what really goes on behind the scenes, I think we both know that is something that can be very different at times. Charlotte's been protected. She's she's covered. They know she's going to be the main female star of that company. They're just going to keep Andrade well away from her for as long as they can. They don't want Andrade going anywhere near Charlotte Flair for the next couple of years. He, he wants to make sure she stays baby-free because it, without her, I think they're in trouble. So she's a star. I don't like it, but she, it's what they've got. Did you hear the stat? I read that. I, do you know, I wrote it down in my notes. Well, I typed it down in my notes, and I thought, do you know what? I don't even need to type that down because I ain't going to forget that. Charlotte Flair's had 66 title matches. Jesus. 66 in like what? What's 2012, 2013? So in seven, eight years, she's had 66 title matches. That's like what? An average of, I don't know, what, like nine a year or something. My maths ain't well, great right now. But And she's like, what, 33? God knows. Let's have a look, right? 66. Divide, say she's been in for seven years. 66 divided by... She averages 9.428 title matches a year. That is ridiculous. And she's 30... And she's won how many titles now? Is it about nine? It's double figures, I think. I think it's at least ten. So say it's ten. So she wins one in six. And she's got... She's 34. So she's probably going to get another six, six or seven title wins before she retires. She's going to be around for a while. And But the fact is, we're talking about her. And she's cracking, and it was a great match. We said it about the Ripley match. It was a great match at WrestleMania. Last night's match, main event, fully deserved, great match. Didn't see a problem with it. Everyone's got a problem with Charlotte getting opportunity, and that's a different conversation, but I think she deserves it. Don't like it, but I think she deserves it. She's the best She's the best women's wrestler on the main yes. roster, except Sasha, I think. I, I just prefer Sasha, but Charlotte possibly has a better resume of matches, but I think she does get a few more chances. Maybe, do you know what I mean? Like, Sasha hasn't, isn't in the main title match every month. She isn't in it 9.428 times a year, we'll say. <laughs> but, um, 
Yeah, so I thought the match overall, it was really good. I, I, I was going to say before, we didn't do a preview show, but I think it every right to main event. For me, it was I was most interested in that match going in. Velveteen Dream, Cole felt just rushed together. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think the other matches. You're not going to have the Champa match main event. Thank God that didn't main event, but we'll get into that in a minute. Um, but yeah, I thought it was really good. The memorable spot was Io Shirai diving off to- off the top of the In Your House sign. That was great. Yeah, that was coming, wasn't it? Everybody wanted their opportunity to play with the uh, play with the set dressing, but that is what it's for, and that was a, a fantastic. That was a fantastic moment. It, it needed it. It needed it. This for me was a B level takeover. And I know people say you don't get them. Well, it is. For me, it is. The card wasn't as strong, I don't believe, as most takeovers. I don't think it's going to go down in infamy as the big WrestleMania weekend takeovers. So it's a B-level one for me. And it needed that moment to shine. And Brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah, without this match, we'd have been saying it It, it was... Not it wasn't the best takeover to be honest. To be honest, I don't think it was anyway. But I'm not to beat it, but it's an extremely high level. Um, so we'll talk about the first match: Candice LeRae, Dakota Kai, and Raquel Gonzalez versus Mia Yim, Shotzi Blackheart, and I'm just waiting for my screen to load. Tegan Knox, Tegan because Knox. I'm going to be honest. Every time these lot have been having the little matches on NXT, I've been fast forwarding through it. I have no interest in it. Um, obviously you got Candice LeRae in there, who's great. Um, for me, this match could have took place on any NXT and it shouldn't have opened. We always have it to take over, bang, straight in the mood. We Usually, yeah. I'm thinking one of these tag matches we undisputed usually opens the show. Bang, we're already on a high and bang, after 50. Actually, we haven't spoke about that amazing performance from, from <laughs> Code Orange at the start of the show. That was amazing. You, you were a big fan of that, Tebs, weren't you? It's fucking garbage. Oh, my God. It's people. It's kids in the garage banging the pots and pans. You said they did... You know uh, who you are. <laughs> they do, so they do the Fiends theme. And who else? Who's, who's else did you say? Alistair Black's? Alistair Black, yeah. Now, for me, yeah, that was music. That last night. Maybe they're not good live. I don't know. Maybe they need to chop it up. I don't know what it was. Or maybe I'm just a miserable old get... But that was just noise, man. That was just thrash noise. I couldn't. I, I, I would not have known they were the people that did the Fiends theme Is by it? a million miles. Nah, they've sang, they've sang it live. Um, where did they sing the Fiend? I, I know they've sang. Do you not remember when they, they sang in Alistair Black's theme and there's the guy like banging his head? Do you it was at like a takeover. They sang. They did. Right. Uh, I'm a big fan, me. I, oh, well, I'm not a big fan, but the song was stuck in my head <laughs> the next day after uh, Takeover hey, Brooklyn. It, each to their own, that's the beauty of it. If people like it, fair enough. Me, I just thought it was a lot of noise. I didn't know what was going on. I was checking sound settings on my TV and everything. But uh, <laughs> look, each to their own. If you like it, fair play to you. Brilliant song. Check it out on Spotify. They have a shirt. Um, it came come up, didn't it? In your house, cold orange on sale yeah. for 24 hours. I thought, if that's cheaper than a tenner, I'm going to buy it, Tabs, and send it to his house. <laughs> um, but yeah, what did you make of this opening six woman tag? I thought I was bored, didn't do anything for me. I was on my phone checking my messages. Yeah. It it was a a top level match that could have been on NXT Weekly. Um I said on I said I think I was replying to you on Twitter that I know it's only six matches last night, but it used to be five absolute bangers for a takeover. Two and a half hours, everybody gets a lot of time. And now it's crept up to six and one of them is a multi-women tag. And then next time, what if they throw another tag match in just to give people to... And I think it's, again, it's going for quantity over quality. If they'd have just ditched this, no offence to them, but or put it on a preview show. They had half an hour preview show where they just talked a lot of shite as normal. So, and then you could have given Balor and uh, Priest another five or ten minutes. You could have given... Um, well, maybe not Cross and Champa, but the women's tag match could have got another five minutes out of it. Yeah, it didn't it didn't do much for me. There's a lot going on in it. You have got Tegan Knox and uh, Dakota Kai and everything. Going. Raquel Gonzalez is looking absolutely dominant to me. She's I think the women's division needs a big powerful woman that doesn't injure people every week. Um, and Raquel Gonzalez could be that dominant sort of big woman, you know, as opposed to the big man wrestler. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing more of her. I think that she needs to get away from Dakota Kai, but. Right results, finished a lot of stories up. Let's hope they'll move on and do their own thing next week. 
Yeah, it was just it was just there, wasn't it? Nothing wrong with it, nothing right no, with it. No. I I just got in my notes, six women's tag, Knox pins Dakota Kai, six dives, job done. Yeah. But, yeah. I think the following match is what I would have had open the show. Um no because I I, I said in our group chat that Finn Balor for me just flatters to deceive time and time again. He has good matches but not great matches. But this was one of his higher end WWE matches. I felt, and I'm not sure Neil was thought it was too good. But I thought it was really good, really fast paced. Yeah. Um, I just, yeah, it got me in, got me into the show. It was really good. Um, yeah, for, for me, Finn Balor probably going to be the next challenger for Adam Cole going forward. Um, he seems to keep getting these wins, um, and I don't know who else is left for Adam Cole. But yeah, that that flat back bump onto the steps, Tebs. Oh, you know, Jesus. Oh. I could I, I could hear the shattering, and I thought it was Steve Austin's music started. Jesus, how does he get up after that and walk away? Absolutely incredible. Balor was fantastic in this. You can see he was just leading the match. But I think we need to talk about the elephant in the room. What was Damien Priest wearing? I, I, he, I he was sort of white fishnets. I, I saw on Twitter everything from cowboy stripper to all sorts of different. I just, for the for the image he's got the the white fishnet look just did do it for me. I really I, I think there's a lot about everybody's uh, ring gear says a lot. You know different stories to tell. So maybe there was a reason why we're going with that. But from going from his sort of dark gothic archer of infamy look to this sort of you know white almost Shawn Michaels esque look, it was a bit different. It was a bit jarring, but. I, I like Damien Priest. Was he in Ring of Honor before NXT? Punishment Martinez in Ring That's, of Honor. Okay. He always so stood never out. Seen, never seen much of him there. Was he Was he that similar sort of gimmick, similar sort of character? Or? Yeah, it was sort of like that. He was never really like pushed to the top. He was in and about where he is now. Do you know what I mean? You'd like have him third on the card with like a decent worker. He'd have like a three-star match, a good match, but never. You could always tell I wish Sarah Bear. There was in New Orleans, they did the super card of honor. And uh, I said to Danny, I said, that punishment Martinez would be in WWE. But I suppose everyone is these days. Like, but... <laughs> so what for him now, though? You know, you've you've lost to Balor. He's already taken on Keith Lee. I'd like to see more from him, but I don't know. Maybe they'll feed him to Karrion Cross next week. I don't know. But um, the, as for the match, like I say, Finn Balor really impressed me. And yeah, it's it, it's very dependable, um, which to me, whenever I see his matches, they come across as average or because it's average for him. But when you actually look at the work he does and for how athletic he is and, and for the ring awareness he's got, it, 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 that last night was fantastic. And I hope, I really hope they give him that push now. Maybe put the title on him again when Cole moves on because I, I'd like to see him become that star of NXT again. You see, now, I, I sort of have a bit of a problem with this, Tebs, right? So, Bauer, at these few years in NXT, went to the main roster, didn't he, yeah? Right. Yeah. So this goes back to like what you were saying about how you was worried that NXT were competing against AEW. Things had changed, right? So you've got Finn Balor, yeah, who is, he's not my cup of tea, but he is a bit of a star. Do you know what I mean? Fans like him on the main roster or whatever. He drops down to try and get more ratings for um, NXT, right? And then for, I know like, obviously you're going to prefer Finn Balor to these types of people, but you've got a big lump of guys like you signed Damian Priest, right? You've signed yeah. Trevor Lee. Yeah, you've got Jonah Rock, who were all pretty talented guys. And the Trevor Lee's great. You've got all talented guys who were on the indies. And they can't make these takeover cards that a few years ago they would have done. But because, do you know what I mean? Because people yeah. who are on the main roster are dropping down, they're just floundering. Like, what has Damian Priest done? What has Jonah Rock done? Trevor Lee, what has he actually done? Do you know what I mean? They need, these guys need to be given the spotlight on takeovers to go out there and kill it. Otherwise, they're just afterthoughts when they're on my TV on a Thursday night. Yeah, and that's and that's coming back to what I said about uh, Priest. There, it's like where does he where does he go now? Where does Damien Priest go now? Who does he? He can't he can't go after the mid level title at NXT. He's got no claim at the the top. So yeah, he is going to be floundering. I think you're, yeah, you think you're right there. I, I like Finn, and I do want him to get I do want him to get that main push. And if they use him as somebody to um, field the new recruits against and being used as that development sort of trainer talent, all well and good. But yeah, I think there. Yeah, I think you're right there. Actually, yeah, I think you're it's right. Like Dijakovic as well. What, 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 well, he's supposed to be he going. To Raw. He's supposed to be going to Raw. Is he? Yeah, apparently. Spoiler alert. Um, 
that's the rumor. Riddled, riddled SmackDown Dijakovic to Raw. Right. Um, maybe with this, uh, what's happened and the culling of a, a large amount of wrestlers, maybe there's going to be more opportunity for wrestlers such as you know um, Damian Priest to move up onto the card faster, move up onto the main roster to keep fresh talent coming through because they're going to need they're going to need fresh talent soon because there's not a lot out there. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So next we have um, Johnny Gargano versus Keith Lee. I think I said only in WWE would you have the great wrestler who's a midget be the heel <laughs> against the big giant baby face in Keith Lee. But I think if you would have had Johnny Gargano of two years, baby face flying everywhere, fast paced against Keith Lee, just like not necessarily baby face or heel, just working his regular style, I think you would have had a better match. Um, out, like the opening five minutes, you've got Gargano just like working over the body parts, and it's just like, come on, I don't need to see this. Keith Lee isn't the sort of guy you want to be selling for five minutes. That's no. not where he's best. You want Keith Lee, bam, 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 chop it on the Indies, Tebs. Keith Lee, he just chop people the entire match. That's all he does. Chop I've people. seen, I've seen stuff of his, yeah, yeah. Um, but I don't know. I, overall, I liked this match because it's two of my favorite wrestlers to watch. I think there was shenanigans I didn't care about. No. It was nowhere near. If you said to me five, three years ago, Johnny Keith Lee's going to sign for WWE and he's going to face Johnny Gargano on a takeover, I'd be like, oh my God, that is going to be insane. And instead it was just, it was okay. I think I went three stars on it or something. It, it, it was just there. It was good, but it wasn't necessarily great. Um, another thing, right? So do you remember on AEW, Tebs, um, what, a few, a few months ago? Do you remember John Moxley? Um, when he got stabbed in the eye. Yep. Yeah. And he was, he was walking, blind for about a month. <laughs> he's walking around with his eye patch on you. <laughs> Not only did Keith Lee get stabbed in one eye on the NXT, apparently he got stabbed in the wrong eye on this takeover. So both eyes have been stabbed and he still kicked out at two. Well, but... Todd, Todd Phil, I, 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 in my normal sarcastic, critical way, I was going to start saying, that's his wrong eye, he's gone for the wrong eye. Todd Phillips actually said at the time, I think, um, he did. He's, he's going after the good eye to take both of them out or something. Look, it's it's bollocks. I'd, I never liked Gargano as a face. Great wrestler, yeah. Loved the matches. Always wanted Champa to win over him. Never, never. Just don't connect to him. Don't like him as a face. Don't like him as a guy. Whatever. But it's just never done that for me. He's never boiled me kettle, should I say? Um, and then when he turned heel, and I know we're supposed to not like him. I know it's supposed to irritate us, but. From that one last beat match being um, interfered on by Candice and both of them turning heel at the same time. And then we've got crappy promos of them sat around the kitchen table trying to be mean. And like you say, he's a little slim athletic face who now thinks he's the nastiest player in the game and it just doesn't fit for him. Um, and then, like you say, you've got the an incredibly athletic big baby face against a technical wrestler who's the heel. And as soon as it starts and he's putting car keys down his trunks and then he's running up to the setting trying to open a door and it's like, fuck off, just wrestling. Just go for it. it really irritated me. I just didn't... All this crap in wrestling matches where I know it's fun and it's supposed to be fun and blah, blah, blah. These two could have had an absolutely amazing wrestling match and it, it, it turned into another Gargano pantomime and it, it just disappoints me because I know how good he is. And I want to see straight wrestling matches, not yeah. not comedy spot of the week. Not from yeah. them anyway. Uh, it's true. I, th I think, I know you said you didn't like Gargano as a face. I loved him when he was like feuding with Vondra, well, Almas at the time. And he had yeah. like a great match that Royal Rumble weekend. And then the, he was so over with the fans and they ruined him by having him be the guy who mowed down Alistair Black. And since then, yeah. he just doesn't seem to be able to find his feet for me. I mean, look at the takeover match with Ricochet about 18 months ago. That was fucking brilliant. Awesome. And now it's just like, I feel like some of these matches I'm watching, this one, and then the next one we're going to talk about, well, the one after, sorry, just aren't the sort of things we're used to seeing on takeover. It's like, right, when you watch takeover, it's sort of a little bit like New Japan. You know, it's going to be two guys in the ring, two girls in the ring, whatever, just going at it, yeah. giving us a great match, trying to win the match. None of this all, this, do you know what I mean? Main roster shit, but no. yeah. So Keith Lee retains, uh, and I don't know where he's going. Um, you'd think Cross, but yeah. you've got to have Cross win that. Um, 
I'm struggling to think of other mid cards. Bala, Bala, maybe if they want to keep him away from Cole, because the one criticism I had of the the Bala Priest match was because the both heels, yeah, the both sort of explicitly say the cheats and dirty players, and so I don't want to see Cole go up against Bala just yet. Put him to one side, so maybe Bala against Keith Lee would be interesting. But it's another big man, little man gimmick. I don't know. Be uh, look, it's just a lot of fun finding out, isn't it? Yeah, and then next we get, as soon as this came on, I was like, well, Velveteen Dream ain't winning. Um, so as soon as they put Cole versus Velveteen Dream there, what was it, back, back lot, something, brawl, fucking bollocks. Yep. Um, the What was it called, back lot brawl? Back lot brawl. William Regal said uh, when he first set this up that it would be in a setting worthy of the NXT Championship and they stuck a wrestling ring out in the car park. <laughs> I, I think... the. the Everything about this match just felt, you know, we haven't got anybody else for call right now. Let's just do it. Let's try and do something. Uh, yeah, sorry, I interrupted. No, no, no. I just, I, what, did, what did you think? I thought, obviously, you know, this sent me to bed. I watched the first couple of minutes. I just thought, what, the, what am I watching this for at half past one in the morning? I thought, <laughs> I, I don't know. I'd sooner be watching the greatest backlash ever than this. Um, <laughs> but. Yeah, I feel like he's just been so well, it's just WWE in it. They have one great cinematic match, and damn it, every month we've got to have a cinematic match. Um, yes. Yeah. Again, if it had been, you could have easily had that match in a ring, surrounded by cars with headlights on, have wrestlers stood on the top of their cars in their trucks, cheering it on, and have a match in a ring, but in a in a backyard, it didn't need all the trucks turning up and chairs being thrown in and trying to open doors. Again, it's shenanigans. It goes back to shenanigans. And they say, well, it worked for Taker versus AJ Styles, so let's try this. And there's a reason it worked with The Undertaker and AJ Styles, because it's fucking Undertaker and AJ Styles making it work. And no offence to Cole and Dream, but they're not Undertaker and AJ Styles right now. Um yeah, there's no need to have one of these cinematic matches on every single show. We're not going to think they're not putting the effort in if they don't try and remake War and Peace every single time there's a match on. And as soon as they mentioned it's in the middle of in the middle of the show, straight away, I think that's why you you might have said I'm off to bed because you know what's going to happen. Cole's winning. You don't change your main title halfway through a show, halfway through a two an hour, fifteen minute show. Um, it just felt like a waste of time, waste of the talents. Waste of what could have been a good gimmick match later down the line with two wrestlers that would have... I mean, do you imagine putting... Building, I don't know, Cross versus Champa over a number of months to finish in a match like that? That would have been a brawl. That was a wrestling match in a car park. Yeah. It, it was just... It weren't very creative, were it? I mean, the reason no. why they're... Um, the stadium stampede and the AJ Taker matches were so successful because it was stuff we haven't seen before. This was just, this was just your typical hardcore match from two thousand and one with a cinematic and, edge thrown on it. And those were the two cinematic matches you just mentioned were the centerpieces of those shows. They built everything around the first night of WrestleMania, then it headlines with the graveyard match, the stadium stampede. Everyone knew this. That was the main event of the night. It went on last, and for for this to be used as a filler between matches, between title matches. Um, I, I just didn't think it did the main men's title any justice whatsoever. No, the, not, think... not at all. But I'm being really critical, but I had fun watching all this. I didn't yeah. hate any of it. I didn't hate any of it. And I'm being very critical um, because you can sit here and say, yeah, they did that suplex really well and this was really good and isn't everything positive. Well, yeah, you need to be critical sometimes, but... I sat and watched it all night, and I had fun. I, I, this wasn't a bad show. Um, just a few steps wrong. Yeah, it it was just a sh- it was just a show, weren't it? It wasn't like wasn't something we're gonna remember. We might remember the main event, but we're not gonna remember anything else from this show. I don't think. Um, but yeah, Adam Cole wins his year long title reign. I sat there thinking, right, I like Adam Cole, yeah, but. He, I feel like this NXT main event scene just needs shaking up a bit. I don't think Dream was the right person, but it's like you had your, you had Riddle, for me, who was the biggest star on your show, even though you didn't realise it for a year. Could have put the belt on him. How he never won the NXT title, I don't know. And then even after Survivor Series, 
Keith Lee came out. He was huge. He, do you know what I mean? Did he what? He yeah. pinned Roman Reigns. And I was thinking, right, just have him go out there. Like he did with Ripley taking the belt off Baszler and made Ripley into a star. Do that with Keith Lee. And instead they just, oh, let's give him the North American title. And it's like, I'm sorry. Nobody gives a shit about the North American title. You don't need a mid-card title for me in NXT. That belt, yeah, although it's had some good matches, it's not prestigious at all. Like when they mentioned in the Keith Lee match that Johnny Gargano once held it, I was like, yeah. did, he, did he? I don't remember yeah. that, but apparently he beat Ricochet in that match I was on about. Yeah, he did, yeah. yeah. Ricochet, won it. Ricochet beat Cole Frick, and then... So, yeah, there's only been about four holders of it. And it, it comes from that ladder match when Cole first won it. Um... I see. I think AEW needed a, a mid card title as well. Um, you imagine if they didn't have the North American title, what NXT would look like in terms of people just treading water. At least it gives something Lee gives reason a uh, reason for Lee to be on the show. And I, I, that sounds awful. I mean, it gives him a title. It gives him a title match, and it gives him a keynote match during a takeover, which he might not have got with there only being one title. So at least he's shining some spotlight on it. But after those, when was the Saudi show where they all got held hostage? November, uh, October. Halloween, it was so, Halloween night when it when Wyatt Bray won the title. So you're saying from mid-October until late January, Keith Lee was absolutely on fire. His stock was never higher. That moment where he stares down Brock Lesnar in, uh, in the Royal Rumble and the crowd was... For an, I've never heard a, a crowd pop so loud for an NXT superstar in a Royal Rumble. I've watched them all back, and I can't, I can't think of a better reception than Keith Lee got at that moment. And, and the rub of going up against Brock Lesnar, he, he needs more to do. And if anything, I'd love him just to... No, that's the thing, because now he's got a title, you've got to have him get beat to move on up, and I don't want to get, see him get beat. I want him to dominate. Yeah, see, I was just thinking last night, because I put picked Gargano in our picks, didn't we? I thought, Gargano can screw him, yeah, right? Yeah. And then they, like, have a feud or something like that. Say, like, they have a mixed tags match after, where not for the belt. So Gargano's North American champion, and then you have a mixed tag main event in a few weeks or whatever in a better match than what we saw on NXT this week, where Lee and Mia Yim go over, and then you say, right, we're done with Johnny Gargano now. Um, Adam Cole, I want your title. NXT take over at whatever summer they're doing, SummerSlam weekend. You have Keith Lee go out there, take the belt off him. Because every time Adam Cole's defending this title, I'm like, hmm, it doesn't feel like the right moment to put it on, say, Champer at the last takeover. It didn't feel like the right time, and it definitely didn't with Velveteen Green. No. Um, but yeah, so, <laughs> I don't know if you heard that. Anyway, um... <laughs> it didn't. It didn't. It wasn't the right moment last night to change a championship. You, you don't change the NXT championship in a car park. Um, <laughs> no, you don't. Dream, and now Cole's got the title, so Dream Dream's out of the main event picture. As long as Cole's got that title, Dream's out. Dream, he's got to go to the main roster. That that for me was his his one song, his last hurrah in NXT. Uh, before he gets moved up, because I don't, I cannot think of anything else he's got left to do. Obviously, win the thing, but um, if he was to stay in NXT another year to get another opportunity to be champion, uh, that's just wasting the guy. Absolutely wasting him. But these matches, I think last last night's the cinematic match was a good opportunity to, like you say, give um, like I say, give Dream one last chance to be in a big match against Cole, try and have his moment. Um, I think it shows where, what's happening with Cole's contract extension now as well. Then I don't think we have to worry about him going off anytime soon. Um, I, I just desperately want to see the undisputed area move up to the main roster. Tag I'm team terrified. Back. Yeah, but the the um, Fish and O'Reilly don't have any don't have anything. Can't win the titles back again. They've done all that. Um, Roderick Strong's done all his North American Championship bit. I, I just think again there's another group. And with all this talent coming through, why not turn it into that development brand again? And yeah. the reason why is because... Now... Yeah, but the reason why is they're competing now against uh, a year-old product with fully established stars. You don't want to be bringing in stars nobody's heard of to go up against Cody Rhodes and Chris Jericho. I suppose. To me, NXT niche need to accept. They're not going to beat AEW. They're just there to saturate the audience. Do you know what I mean? I think you're always going to get 500, 600,000 people who are going to watch NXT over AEW. Um, 
regardless who you have on the show. But I know why they're doing it. Um, next, right. Well, lastly, actually, so we've spoke about the main event. Tommaso Ciampa, the star, the to me, the gatekeeper of NXT against Killy. I hate saying this. Carrion Cross. Killer yep. fucking Cross. Um, in what a match. They could have had a really good match. I am someone who always says, look, I have the guy who's going to go over, dominate. I don't want him to go. I think I said to you on the other podcast we drew and Seth Rollins. I don't want to see him go back and forth. Have him go out there and dominate him. But yeah, I didn't want to see it. I want it to take over. I don't want to see a two-star match in the semi-main event at TakeOver. It was <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It was like eight minutes, something like that. Maybe even less just smashes him clean. I'm thinking, I've watched Ciampa go 40-minute wars back and forth with people, and now he just loses yeah. to Killian Cross. Didn't you've, like you've, it. You're going to hate me for this. You loved I, it, didn't you, you prick? I really I really enjoyed it. Um, if anything, I think Ciampa got too much offensive. Oh, piss off, Ted. I'm serious. I'm serious. Cross, from what I've seen of him, from the way he's being portrayed, from the way he's being uh, presented to us, I I was going to say this earlier. You know where you say you normally have one of these big, you know, big banger of a matches to open the show. I would have loved to see Cross Champer open the show, have the big build up there opening, and just have Cross come out and take his fucking head off. Uh, what a statement that'd be for opening your takeover. The big match we're setting it off first. It's not for a title, so we can go put it on first. And Cross just absolutely destroys the man that's gone forty minutes with Gargano in Iron Man matches. I, that's the only criticism I've got. I think for his character, um, I keep saying that, that's awful. But for Cross, coming into NXT, if if he'd have taken any more offence, he'd have just looked like another Damien Priest. I know uh, what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Just do it on TV, though, not on a takeover. Because <laughs> now, now what do we have? Do we have another Bray Wyatt where, oh, he's got to beat him in five minutes? Do you know what I mean? No, no, no. Basically, Cross, for me, last night, Cross was just, dominant this was champa who's you know he's he's had his injuries it's been in his wars this is the old hat of nxt and this new bloke has come in and just said get out of my way that's all it wasn't a supernatural you know he's not the supernatural head carrying fiend gimmick it's none of that that you've got to try and suspend your disbelief to believe in all we know is this guy cross is dangerous and like i say the only the only minor criticism i had is that Champa just got bit too much? I'd have just loved to see him, you know, lariat slam, power slam. <laughs> see, he's he's been very um, obnoxious to me, but all the viewers will be able to see what a horrible man he is when he puts this on YouTube. <laughs> oh, I, can't, I can't be asked to edit it out. Um, no, and I, I do know what you're saying. I know what you're saying, but I think it's just because if the show would have been bam, 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 then yeah, you could have done this. But for me, the show, I was already a bit like, mm, is this show any good? We just had the disappointing title match. And after this, I wanted, yeah, let's go out and have a good match. So I think it would have been more fitting on a takeover where it's a great takeover and you just have this smashed in, like you st- yeah. the starter in the middle. But because the takeover was lesser quality than what we're used to anyway, to then have this was just, for me, was just like, I mean, honestly, no, I, I, I thought it was absolutely right. It's passing of the torch. It, as Champer always said, he's not going to go up to the main roster. Because we keep talking about getting people, moving people on, but there's a lot of these people now that have been around for a couple of years that just don't have anything more to do. So I'd be interested to see what what they're going to do with Champer after this. They'll, yeah. probably, set him, they'll probably set Damian Priest on him now. They've got nothing to do. <laughs> yeah, trying to think who you could even have him go with. Maybe maybe Keith Lee against Champer or something. Babyface versus... versus uh... Babyface, who knows? So, yeah, so we spoke about the main event at the start. So, yeah, overall, the main takes from the show. Great that Io Shirai finally gets the NXT women's title. I hope she has a really long run with it. Um, look for Charlotte and potentially Rhea to just move on now. Um, back on the main roster. I don't know where Adam Cole goes from here. Velveteen Dream looks set to be moving up to the main roster. So, yeah, could be a big transition period from NXT. How overall, Tebs, overall, what would you say about this show? Your thoughts overall? Disappointed, exceed your expectations, or did it not? I I was whelmed. I wasn't overwhelmed. I wasn't underwhelmed. I was just whelmed. I don't know if that's a word. But, you know, I expected a solid card of wrestling. Got it. It was lean. It was efficient. Some of it was a bit, uh, a bit too baggy in places, like the word of the day is shenanigans. 
um, could have done without that and make it more of a you know straight wrestling card than New Japan style. But other than that, it it's solid from NXT as always. They didn't put any foots wrong. We didn't get anyone you know being uh, concussed or any botched moves, and we didn't get any ridiculous twists and stuff. It was just solid storytelling, solid wrestling. Maybe a few bits not to my liking. Yeah, for me, fine, forgetful. And it's not going to be like the greatest match ever next Sunday night. I'll start thinking, the greatest match ever, oh, yeah. I'm excited for that one. Um, so, yeah, nice little segue. So, we will, I don't know if you'll be joining us, Tebs, or not, but I'll hopefully if, be doing a preview if show. I'm in, if I'm invited, if I'm invited, I'll be along. Of course you're invited. Thinking maybe Wednesday. I um, don't know what your plans are. Um, I, I would have done it Thursday, but because there's always like that fucking big block of wrestling to watch on a Thursday. Um, but yeah, so we'll be previewing the Backlash show. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'm talking to you. Hit that subscribe button. Give us some likes. Follow us on Twitter at Neutral Res. Follow Tebs on Twitter at Northern Tebs. Um, so yeah, we'll be back midweek to talk about the greatest match ever Edge versus Randy Orton. This has been NXT in your house, and we're going to leave you with the greatest song ever. <laughs> See you later, everyone. See you later, Tebs. See you later, man. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>